Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome. We're so excited to have you here, and thank you for joining us wherever you are, whatever time, if it's 10 a.m. and you're out on the California side of the country, are you all the way over where our guest is on the east side of the country at one o'clock? We are thrilled to have you here, and it's so good to be back here, and I'm so excited for the guest <laughs> that we have today. She's one of my favorites. They're all my favorites, but she's really one of my favorites. <laughs> Before we get started, if you could please say hello from and where you're from in the chat. We'd love to see uh, where everyone is coming from. And make sure you stay until the end of this little art talk because we do have a very special gift for you. We love that we can gather still in this type of engaging platform. It really makes us happy to know that not everyone is an island and that we can still get together, even if we are traveling and getting out. This is just such a great way to learn about our artists, a little bit about how they got started and what they're working on and get a tour of their studios. For me, there's nothing more inspiring than getting a little tour or spin around someone else's art space or studio. So our guest today is Patty Euler. If you're not familiar with Patty, she is the owner of the Queen's Inc., which just closed as a brick and mortar business, but that is not stopping her at all. She'll share a little bit about her new life, which is creating, which she is creating for herself and what this newfound freedom has given her. When Patty first reached out to us to produce her, to produce her courses here at Create Arts Online, we were not sure what to expect. But Patty is one of the most organized, prepped, and ready to film artists we have worked with. When she shows up here at the studio, she is ready to work, and her drive and ambition are very inspiring. I know I have to have my extra A game on when she is here. We have eight courses of Patty's live now and more in the pipeline. And of course, she will be back next year to shoot more. We always love Patty's visits. They're filled with lots of fun and laughter and, of course, good hard work. So without further ado, I would love to welcome Patty Euler to this Create Arts Online live YouTube event. Hi, Tammy. And hi to all my um, royal creatives. Uh, it's great to have an opportunity to reach out to all of you and share a little bit about what I've been doing and what's um, happening on the horizon. We have some great things planned. And um, Tammy, I have to say that I'm sure that several of my um, good friends uh, are probably rolling on the floor laughing. As you said, I was one of the most organized because truly it takes a village um, because on the surface, no, I am chaos in art, which I love. But um, Anna always made sure, my business partner, Anna White, always made sure that I had everything I need, everything was organized, and I only took what was important. So that set a, a good tone for our workshops that we did. So thank you for that. Well, thank you. And sending me boxes and boxes of your samples to see if these were the right courses to film is amazing. And you're the only artist that has ever done that. And we love it. So I get boxes of what's to come. And then I get boxes of what you are going to use to film. And then we hit the ground running and then we ship them back to you. So it's quite a system we've worked out and I'm really thrilled. You know, many people get to see behind the scenes of how these courses come to be, but you've really made it um, easy for us to produce some really incredible work that you should get to now share with um, your community, our community. And as it's growing, you know, more and more people get to know who you are. But before we go more into that, let's get back to the beginning of Patty Euler. Maybe she was working for AT&T, maybe she was doing something else, and there had to be a switch to become the queen that you are in the ink world. So how did that happen? Well, I like to say that I had a chance to live vicariously through my day job um, when I had the, the Queen's Inc. because um, I, it was a fun, you know, when I picked the name, I wanted everything to be top notch and royal and everybody to be treated like royalty. And so that's how the name evolved. And when we started, um, we were a brick and mortar store that sold rubber stamps, mainly rubber stamps. But um, when I grew up, we always did art. So how I came about mixed media was that, I, you know, and I think um, Mixed media is truly the ADD of the art world because, you know, you see something and it's like, oh my gosh, glitter. Oh my gosh, you know, something else over here. And you have an opportunity to do a lot of things. And that's growing up. 
I, you know, I sewed, I did ceramics, I painted, I did woodworking, um, I did cross stitch and needlepoint. So a lot of the things, the background of art that I have um, sort of put me in place to do my, um, my shop. And when we first started, you know, at that time in the paper arts industry, most people were doing rubber stamping and greeting cards and scrapbooking. And all those things are great and fine. And I know some amazing artists that do that form, but that was not me. So I knew that, you know, having rubber stamps, they could be a tool. They could be, um, you know, some way that you could get an image and expand upon it and paint it and change it and, you know, do woodworking and fabric and jewelry. So when I opened the Queen's Inc um, at, the t at that time, we were never pigeonholed in that, you know, uh, card making, um, scrapbooking. We did altered arts, you know, we did other things. We did altered books. Um, we had, you know, some of the artists that came to teach early on, um, one of them, Cheryl Darrow, she, she was a visionary too. So some of the things that I'm still doing today were things that she introduced us to as far as looking at materials that might be used more industrial or be used for other things to use them in the art world. And, um, you know, we had a chance to share a lot of that with, um, with our students. And most artists that used to come teach would say to us, your students are so advanced. And, you know, they were so prepared, but we, you know, that was part of education was really important to us. Um, and to me, and the fact that we introduced them to so many really amazing people that we were always stepping up the game. Well, and that that is really what shows in the work that you even present, that this isn't something that just happens in a vacuum. You really have to think about the process and think about how you want to create these different projects that you then present to us. And even, you know, the inspiration you do get from other artists as they're coming through your business so that you can share more and more of what you're saying, these altered arts and really getting such a... Um, you know, deep understanding for the mixed media world, which is really incredible. So when did you decide when you opened the brick and mortar and you wanted to get past scrapbooking, did you know right away that you would also be a teacher for these types of um, projects and different things and techniques you wanted everyone to learn? Were you going to teach right away? Well, it was something that sort of evolved. I mean, as a business owner at the time when I, when I opened the store, I did have a partner. And she was more of the, the business side of it. And I was more of the artistic side. So we knew we wanted to teach. And, you know, unfortunately, when we first opened that first year, 9-11 um, hit and our business came to a complete standstill. So we knew that the only way that we were going to survive was to, you know, to get back you know, in, in the game and try to teach classes and teach them locally because people weren't traveling. And, um, you know, since I had a background of doing different, you know, mixed media projects and things, it was a, a, not a difficult transition. And in my um, corporate life with at and I did a lot of training. I, you know, did a lot of events where we had to plan, you know, presentations and they had to be you know, geared to be more fun than just, you know, totally, you know, business. And I taught sales training. So I felt like I had the ability to, to do that. And then I just changed it to doing art. And I absolutely love teaching because I like sharing my knowledge, sharing what I know and seeing how people have evolved. You know, the, the I guess the best gift, the, the most enjoyment that I've gotten over the years is seeing how, you know, somebody will come in and they will not have any idea of what they want to do or how to do things. And they embrace the art and they become amazing artists. Well, and that that is really what's incredible is that if you are there to present so many different, you know, techniques that you hope 
people are inspired and that comes from all the different things that you're teaching and that's you know that's what's that is your gift and you have brought in some incredible people so you said that it happened you know you opened in 9 11 but you were all in there was no way that you were going to be able to stop and you stayed open for how many years through covid and everything 23 23 so when i retired from at&t i got in you know i was gifted an early buyout and that was like in september and by december i had opened the store it happened so fast that I didn't really have time to think about all the scary things. I mean, I had a good background, you know, um, because I used to have to negotiate big sales contracts. And, um, you know, I, I recognize the fact that, you know, in retail, you know, some days are good and some days are not so good. And what do you do to, you know, to change that around and, you know, to kind of forecast with different events and different things and looking at new, you know, products and things like that. So I felt like um, my time with at and I was there 27 years. I had a great, I mean, they were for me a great company to work for because I learned a lot and I was able to parlay that into opening um, the, the shop. And I always knew I wanted to do something to have my own business but I wasn't sure what that was. And once I started into looking at mixed media and rubber stamps and I was really starting to get into doing some of my own work, um, it just, I don't know, it just happened. It was sort of, um, it was, you know, it was, it was a miracle. I do believe that, um, you know, God sent that whole, you know, thing my way somehow. Um, well, because I'm I had a business partner and um, we, she said she was sort of my birthing partner because after three years, retail was not her thing. And so, you know, we had a, a very amicable transition and a buyout and I, you know, kept going. Well, and it's, it's interesting because you and I, I think, you know, we've talked about this before, have such similar backgrounds, A, in the sense that we had careers prior that really trained us to do what we do now, me in the movie industry, working, you know, on movies and television, and then producing now online courses. But what's also, I think, really familiar, uh, similar for you and I is the artist and the business person, and that we do have both sides of that in our life. And a lot of artists can't say that they do that. They prefer to just be in their studio, just creating and not do the business end. And you really have both sides of that brain that work really well together. And it's been another great part of what this partnership with you has helped us do is you really understand the marketing and you understand, you know, what it takes to get something from a bunch of pieces of paper out into a course out into the world. And that's right. basically what we do. And we just love that that's what you are so capable uh, of doing. Well, it comes from experience. So, you know, 23 years has served me well. And, and you will go on. I'm just going to say, and you know what? The other thing too is one of the things I learned early on is to surround yourself with people who lift you up and people who um, can support you in what you do or and appreciate what you do. And you can learn from them as well because, you know, so many of the people that I have met along the way have been incredible mentors to me as well. Yes, yes. I know you and I could sit and have a long glass of wine and talk about so much of the similarities of that. And you like me too. And Jerry hates when I say this, but we did it all without a business plan. <laughs> we have plans <laughs> now, but I did not present a business plan to any bank or anything or anybody. I just kind of hit the ground running and he had to stay next to me if he was going to be along for the ride. And now he is. So I totally get it. So I guess my next question, but I think we already just kind of covered it, is how you did weather the ups and downs. But maybe there is something more you can share about that because it did come to this final ending of closing the shop, but which is now just we're considering a transition. So maybe share how this has all just kind of happened. Well, you know, there's there's there have been a lot of ups and downs because in that first couple of years, we went through a lot of different things. There was a big hurricane in, a, in our area. Unfortunately, we had the, the Beltway Sniper. 
Um, we had a major ice storm in February of that first year where this, the shop was closed about 15 days of the month. But you just have to keep, you know, you just keep going. You figure out how you're going to make it work. And then, you know, the, the latest thing, which you know, I don't want to dwell on it, but, you know, COVID changed how everybody does business. And, um, you know, I, I do have to say that I was so lucky and so grateful to all the people that supported, you know, the, the shop when that happened. You know, we had a big art auction. A couple of my friends put together this big, um, Scott Cooper and D. Gray and Anna White and, you know, um, Terry Quinn. They all helped in putting this great art auction together so that, um, and the artists donated their artwork so we could make money, so we could stay afloat and pay our rent and, um, and you know, and keep going. And then I had people who would just come in and, you know, give me money, you know, please, you know, or wouldn't take any change. They buy something with $3 and keep, you know, tell me to keep the, the change from a $20 bill because they wanted the shop to continue. And we did for quite some time. Um, but, you know, I, and now I will say I didn't close because of that. You know, I closed really because it was time. But I have to say that people really kept me, kept me going. And I will be forever, ever grateful for, you know, for all of that. But, you know, after 23 years, I, you know, I had a big corporate life. I had a big art life in, re, you know, retail. So as my friend Anna said, now it's time for me to have a life in that <laughs> now I can do things for me, you know, um, find time to really focus on the kind of art that I want to do, you know, that I'm not really designing things for courses or, you know, figuring out what kind of products that we need to carry in the store that I can just kind of focus on the kind of things that, um, that mean a lot to me. So I'm, re you know, it's only been three and a half months. I'm still in the transition, but I'm looking forward to that. Well, I think that would transition very nicely into my next question, which is what are your plans and how do you plan to stay inspired and um, continue to create? Well, um, I, I do, you know what, surprisingly, I haven't had a lot of time to do, um, to work on new projects. I've done some, um, but in September, um, I am planning to go off the grid. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have seen the, my newsletter when I, in May, I was up in um, New Hampshire with um, Anna and her husband, Andy's family. And we had an amazing time up there. And the minute you get out of the car, you feel the calmness and the air is so refreshing. And I decided that I was going to get a cabin at a lake, you know, in Vermont for the whole month of September and just kind of really go off the grid and sort of decide, you know, what it is that I want to do, um, go, you know, going forward, how, how do I want to do my art? How do I want to present my art and the kind of art that I, that I want to do? And so I'm really looking forward to that. And it's something that is totally off um, and out of my comfort zone, but I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to it. So I'm not taking a lot of clothes. I'm just going to rough it, but I'm taking a ton of art supplies. So I can sit on the porch, in the cabin, in front of the lake and I can paint and I can, you know, do whatever it is that, that I want to do. So that's the big, you know, the big thing that is happening. But there are some, some you know, positive things on the horizon as far as, you know, what it is um, I'm going to do. I'm going to put together a group of mini workshops and we're going to call it Art at the Kitchen Table. So we're going to gather where, you know, I'm, um, temporarily staying in Mount Airy with my friend, Sue. She has this huge house and she, uh, you know, had offered for me to bring my art materials here. And I've set up my, um, my room where I have all my supplies and now we're working on um, where we're gonna do some workshops. So Art at the Kitchen Table, we'll, we'll have a gathering of four to six people and we'll teach small, you know, small art pieces and that will happen sometime October and November. So I'm really, you know, looking forward to that. And then, um, you know, I've been scouring, you know, the, the country, so to speak, to figure out some other opportunities. So 
there's a, a place in Frederick, Maryland um, called the Art, it's called Art Collective. And they also do, um, they sell a lot of artisan artwork and they have a spot for workshops. So um, the owner is Chelsea um, and I've been working with her and we've got an event set up for October, I think 14th, where I'm gonna teach two workshops and I'm gonna have a pop-up shop to have some art available for sale. Um, recently, a couple of days ago, my sister Kathy and I uh, and her husband, Tom, we went to um, Luckett's, Virginia and did some amazing antiquing. And um, we found this shop called The Lazy Daisy, which is an amazing um, collection of artwork and artisan work. And they also are looking for teachers. So, you know, I'm just sort of branching out and I, you know, spoke with them. So, you know, that's in the works too. So now I'll have an opportunity to maybe reach some of our students who traveled really far to come to, um, to our workshops. And then, okay, so I'm just gonna whisper this because this, <laughs> this, I'm not telling you the whole detail, okay? So just get over it. I'm only gonna let out a hint here. Um, I'm working on an art retreat and the dates have been set, the place has been found and um, it's gonna be uh, sometime in March of next year. And all I'm gonna say is my boyfriend's back. That's it. So <laughs> some of you may figure that out and some of you may not, but probably in the next couple of weeks as we finalize the details of the actual retreat itself, um, we'll get information out to everyone. Um, so please pay attention to our newsletters as it comes out because I think this is something that's going to go. It's going to people are going to sign up really fast. It's going to go fast. So I don't want to hear people crying because I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to be able to, you know. But I think we'll be able to fit about thirty people. We have this amazing conference center that we found. I mean, it has everything. So it is going to be an epic retreat. That's all I'm going to say. So stay tuned. Stay tuned for that. I may have to even sign up for that one. I think you will. <laughs> I can't wait to hear more about it, but I totally agree with you having a, a little more inkling of what is happening that I highly recommend everyone stay real close to the computer when that announcement comes out because it will sell out very quickly. And, and that's fantastic. So maybe now's a good time for you to pick up your other camera and give us a little tour around your, you don't call this your art studio, you kind of call this your art room, but you have a lot of art that you can share um, with everyone. And maybe they can also, they'll see that the piece that's sitting right now in front of the phone that's going to give us this tour is her paper mosaic course. And, you know, that is just one version of it, but I've got one hanging on my wall here and I've seen many other versions. And it's one of my favorite courses and projects because it never is going to turn out the same. They're so different. They can make a series on a wall. You could do an entire, you know, big, small, however you want to do it. But uh, now maybe, Patty, you can uh, give us a little tour just around uh, the okay. studio art room. Okay. So this is, the, you see here, this is the paper mosaics. And then I'm going to lift this up and I'm going to show this piece here. I'll stand up here. Um, this piece here is um, called, um, this was called Off the Grid. And we did a workshop that, that um, can you see that? We did a workshop that we called Guerrilla Art, which is unpredictable. You have to do, you know, work with what you have. Um, you know, you didn't get to use the materials you wanted. People came, they could only bring 10 things to use. And at the end of all the artwork that was made that day, we made them cut it up and we put it into these squares. So similar to paper mosaics and also, you know, as you can see the theme here for me is I love things that are in a grid or mosaics and I try to make them different. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of technique in this piece as well. Um, over here, we have um, a piece. This is called um, Heart Squared, which is just a variety of um, different size hearts and squares. And they are um, 
done with handmade papers and scrapbook papers and painted pieces. And then here's one of my um, gilded mosaics. The light in here is not great, so I apologize. But anyway, that's one of the gilded mosaics. And then um, I'm gonna show you one of my new friends. This is Coco. He's always, he's always following me around. Um, this is a piece that I did. This is just um, a Tracy Verdugo um, inspired um, piece. And then I have these metal pieces. These were done by Alicia Hart when she came and taught workshops at the Queen's Inc. And she made these pieces for me. These are uh, pewter embossed metal. And then here's a piece that I have that was done in a workshop that Catherine England um, came and taught. And I think Tammy isn't, she's on the books to come uh, film another workshop for you. Yeah, she'll be here in a couple of weeks to film one for our Mosaic Arts Online community, but she has courses with both Create Arts Online and the beaded one we have at Mosaic Arts Online. So yeah, she's got quite a few courses on both uh, websites. And then, of course, my most, what's really kind of started it all is the paper mosaics, which is um, bits of paper, scrapbook paper, regular paper, handmade paper, glitter, embossing powder, gold leafing, all combined together to create these beautiful squares. And here's, here's another version of that. And then, of course, my cigar box is also one of the um, signature classes that we teach. And this one I did, I was in a collaborative of tarot cards, and um, we each had to make a box for our cards to fit in. So, of course, mine would be um, the cigar box. And then here's a piece from my buddy Dee Gray, who taught many classes at the Queen's Inc., um, her forte is assemblage and, and painting. She's very good at it. And I've done a lot with artist trading cards. I mean, it's a, a technique that's been around for a really long time, but it's starting to make a comeback again. And you know what they say, everything old is new again. So people are, um, you know, still into that. And it's a way to make small pieces that can be framed as well. Um, so my... Um, Best friend from childhood, Jan, gave me this when we opened the, the store, and it said, art is one of those things we simply must do so that our spirit may continue to grow. And I think that is so true, because if I'm not doing art, I get cranky. Um, here's my uh, Laurie Micah-inspired um, artwork. And these are courses that um, Lori came and taught um, at the Queen's Inc. And she also has some courses um, online with you. And she is really one of the most amazing, talented artists. And I have my little brush um, set up here. I still have more brushes that need to go in there. Um, and then recently, we did this really fun workshop where we just, just for fun, we made this cute little studio. We called it um, Where Artists Create. And we created this little studio in miniature. And we even, um, Sue, who does all the woodworking for me, she made this little teeny Ikea shelf. So that was really fun. That was one of the workshops we did before um, we shut down the store. And I have another Lori Micah piece. And here's my buddy. I'm not gonna say my boyfriend, um, but here's Seth he gave me this piece and I treasure it. It's really wonderful. Um, and I have another D Gray piece and Lori Micah. And I just love surrounding myself by art from other artists because that's what inspires me as well. And here's one of my um, text me pieces, a little differently, a little more color. And then um, art, my art for me, um, enrobed, embedded, embellished. Um, this was a, a stamp, a rubber, uh, an art foamy that I embellished with beads and jewels. And that was kind of a fun class that we did. 
And here is um, a piece of another piece of gilded mosaics. I have this wonderful piece that was done by my friend um, KP, Kristen Powers of Art Foamies, and uh, Rogine Mattis. Um, here's one of her pieces. She does paper clay and she does amazing um, artwork with paper clay. And um, it's just really a piece that I treasure. I really, really like it. And here's another a different version of the heart squared. And I have some, um, here's a Zentangle piece. My friend Jean Cocky made that for me. And here's a piece, another Zentangle piece with a beautiful uh, jeweled crown by my friend Lori Champagne. And, um, you know, because I feel very, very lucky. I've been gifted with some beautiful pieces of art. And, you know, here's kind of a creative, you know, you ask like things that inspire me. Um, this is just a box, a white box that now is covered with a beautiful piece of handmade papers and some art. Makes a nice gift in itself when you have to give something to somebody. And um, so that's what you can do with all of your leftover pieces of scraps and papers, because we never throw anything away. And then um, over here, so here's, here's some of our, when you, um, some of my organization, again, you know, it takes a village. I can't take full credit for this. Um, Sue has helped me get this room set up. This was her dining room. So she got rid of her furniture so we could um, use this as our uh, supply room where we keep all of our art supplies. And the bins are marked with, you know, papers and tools and inks and all kinds of yummy goodies that we use, you know, um, mostly the things that we use pretty frequently um, that we have. And I have another shelf over here that has that as well. And then um, one of our most popular classes recently were the tiny little fairy doors, which were really cute. We made these cute little fairy doors to add a little bit of magic to your, um, to your studio. And then um, here's just some other other pieces that I have up there and some more. Um, so here's a few, just a few of my cigar boxes. I still have, I still have plenty. But, um, you know, my mantra is in order to be creative, you must have critical mass. So I think I do have that. Because you have to have a lot to choose from. You can't just have five buttons, you have to have 505 buttons. And then um, I have another little dress form just waiting to, to be decorated. And here's a piece that I have over here. Here's some pieces. So this was um, what sort of inspired the Use Your Stash uh, online course. And here's another, um, here's a strip club. And then this was an illuminated um, alphabet that I did early on um, with Zentangle. So you can see I have a lot of, a lot of good different things. All right, I'm going to go back to the desk. Thank you so much for that tour, Patty. That was awesome just to see how you know beautifully you have it displayed and i have my own patty euler wall over here in the studio because everything patty makes for our courses here she does gift to us which is fabulous so most of the work that actually is hanging there since there are going to be nine courses total once the last one comes out till next year we are very fortunate to have a gorgeous wall of your work, including some of Lori Micah's and Sunny Carvalho's and others, but it's really special to be able to walk into my studio and just see such gorgeous art. So you really shared a lot of um, what you have there, but you know, more is these um, courses that you have here as well. And obviously the paper mosaic, you showed the gilded mosaic, the strip club, cigar boxes you could make for days and the you know whimsical flower that's made on the clayboard i mean there is just so many different directions that you go in and 
one of the gifts that comes with your courses is that you and Anna have really worked hard to build these kits for everybody, which I am so grateful for because then it's not up to us to have to make a shipping business on top of everything else. Yeah. So you tell us a little bit about how that transition is happening, that Anna is still going to be shipping and you're going to have You still have an online store, correct? We do. We still have an online store and we're we're working on rebuilding our website to, in, you know, we're, we're really going to curate the items that we have on there and we're going to have more um, kits, more um, products that support what you do, you know, the, the staples that of the, the things that we believe in, you know, the kind of tape that we use, the kind of glue that we use, the kind of glue sticks. Um, we're gonna add some papers, um, you know, and we're, we're just gonna look at what's important to continuing, you know, doing good art. Well, and yeah. Anna, is, she's in Pennsylvania. Um, so she, that's, you know, one of the other reasons she's moved and she is, rebuilding a house Anna is and she's so so talented um and I really am so grateful to have had her in my life and during the time of of COVID um she just jumped right in and continued to help me so now she's building her own life um but she is still she's doing the website she's going to manage you know the classes putting you know getting them all listed um, she's doing, you know, the shipping and the ordering. So we still have all of that. And I know a lot of people, um, were, weren't sure whether we were still continuing that, but we are. And the other thing too, is we'll be better at getting our newsletter out. I mean, it's been a little spotty because I truly have been off the grid. You know, I said for the first, you know, six weeks, I really wasn't doing anything. I was just, you know, sort of laying low because, it was a hard transition, you know, after having a retail store and the Queen's Inc. was my life for so long. It just, you know, it was a hard, a hard transition, but I'm very happy. I, you know, I love my life now. Um, I loved it then and I love now how it's different. And um, I've had more opportunity to spend time with friends and have, you know, lunch and, do different things. I feel like I've been busier now than I was when I was working. I was like, how did I have time to do all that stuff? <laughs> but it's been, you know, it's been really, um, really good. And I am so grateful because a lot of our um, Royal creatives have just reached out to me, you know, called, emailed, texted, just say, Hey, how are you? How are you doing? How's things on the other side? And that mm -hmm. means a lot because, you know, after 23 years, you know, they're the people that have uh, supported the business that were our patrons. They're really not customers. They're mm -hmm. family and friends. And it's, you know, it's really hard when you um, you don't see them that often. You're not surrounded by them. Yes. And you you uh, might be, you know, in the dictionary as the quintessential one door closes and another opens or a big old window open for you. Yeah, because it really it, it, I totally respect how and I remember when you told me that this was happening and it really was a very sad time in your life. It was a huge transition. And to know that only three months later, you are like beaming, couldn't be happier, more is coming your way in all the right ways. And to have those family and friends and customers is great. Is anybody have any questions for Patty before we move on to our big special bonus gift? You can put them in the chat and then Jerry's on the other side of this camera. He'll tell them to me and we'll ask Patty those questions. I know there's a lot of your followers on here. Some very special people have showed up. Thank you, everyone that has showed up. We love doing these. I have really, uh, Jerry and I have both really ramped up our schedule with lives. We are going to have another one in a couple of weeks that is going to be with Lara Cornell, who's actually a sustainable artist out of Minneapolis. And I'm really excited to just bring her in and um, talk about what it's like to work um, sustainably and really how to coach people. And if you're going to be an artist, how to do it with really, you know, quality uh, sort of products and um, intention and all of that. But let me see here if we have any questions coming in yet. I don't have anybody saying questions yet. Nope, no questions yet. 
Um, so Patty, is there anything else you want to add into this fabulous little art talk we've had here and share anything more? Well, I, you know, I think I covered a lot. I'm grateful for the opportunity, Tammy, to, to reach out to, you know, my friends and um, my followers and we're, you know, we're still continuing on. And I think, you know, um, October, November, um, will be good months for um, you know new workshops and opportunities. I, I will say too, I forgot to, to mention that um, I have taught some classes um, at Bead Soup back at Savage Mill. Um, we did some um, shrink art classes, so kind of mixed media jewelry. Um, and um, I have one coming up on the 18th of August. So. Um, we just sent out a newsletter. So that information is listed in the newsletter or you can go to beadsoup.com, uh, their website um, and, and check that out. Um, so again, you know, I'm just continuing on that mixed media road to doing lots of different things. Well, yes, you are a mainstay in the mixed media world. You're not going anywhere. In fact, I, like you said, I think you're going to be busier than you were before. And it's kind of great because now it's almost like all of the tentacles are going out in all different directions instead of being in one central place, which yes. I think is fabulous. And I can't wait to hear more about what is coming. Um, I'm so grateful to the courses that we do have here because people have gotten really excited to take and learn from you and a lot of our artists that have crossed over from Mosaic Arts Online to Create Arts Online. They love the mixed media world. They're not just stuck in breaking rocks and stones and glass. They want to learn how to do a lot of the things that you teach. And you really do open up the world of not just mixed media, but art elements and understanding composition and understanding color and understanding things on a level that makes it easy to absorb and then produce something. And it's so gratifying the pieces that people are creating because it can be done in a short period of time, which is not mosaic, and give you some sense of achievability, gratification, and they're hung on your wall in just a few days. And even the course we have out just now that we've launched, Majestic Bones, I love it. And I love that we can take dominoes and stamp them and do fun things to them and how different they can be. So. Each of your courses is so unique, so different, and so available to every creator that's out there. Well, Tammy, thank you so much for this opportunity. It's, it's been really great. So on that note, we do have a special prize or bonus gift for everyone. And with all eight of her courses now, you can get them all for 15% off. Until tomorrow at midnight, use that code PATTY15, that's P-A-T-T-I 15. And if you don't own any of our courses, this is the best price you're going to get for them. And all of our courses are um, lifetime access. They never go away once you own them. You can go back and watch every section as often as you like. And it is literally like having PATTY. Very fun very entertaining Patty by your side as you're creating. And she really takes you step by step in each of her courses. And people have really showed incredible results. They've shared with us. We do have our students of Create Arts Online Facebook group. We love seeing what everyone creates there, engaging. And between Patty and our other artists, it's really um, a great platform to share your work, or you can always, always ask questions and share your work in the comment sections of all of our courses. So that, um, with that being said, Patty, I cannot thank you enough for sharing this time with us, giving us a little background and where everything is heading in the near future, including your very special top secret retreat that's coming up in the spring. And I have a we have one more. We have one question. Yes, you have my favorite. Do you have a favorite material that you like to work with? You know, yes, I do. And I haven't really done much with it in a long time, other than the whimsical wildflower course that we have. Um, I love um, Clayboard or Stampboard by Ampersand Art Supply. It is the most versatile um, product or surface substrate 
that you can yeah. you can use. It is museum quality. So if you're selling your art or you're uh, showing your art, it is beautiful hardboard. Um, the other thing too is that it is both uh, subtractable as well as additive. Oh, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't put my picture up. So you you know you color the background and then you do your design and then you use graffito type tools and then you scratch off the top surface and you reveal that beautiful pristine white clay board that is underneath um, of that. And you can create all kinds of texture and detail by using the tools. Um, it is, if you're doing um, st uh, stamped images, the images with black ink are so sharp and crisp and clear. I just absolutely, absolutely adore this product. And I used to, years ago, when I first started, was demonstrating for Ampersand um, and using their, um, their products um, for them. And, you know, the thing is, any kind of um, ink or um, thin washes uh, of paint, you can't use really heavy um, latex paints or acrylic paints because as you scratch away, it tends to chip a little bit, but, you know, uh, stamping ink, alcohol inks are amazing on this surface. Um, and then they make their own product clayboard ink. So I just can't say enough about the company for one and also um, this product. So if you've not had a chance to use it, um, we do, we have the Whimsical Weaving course, or excuse me, the Whimsical Wildflower course and we also have um, some of the clayboard pieces and the tools uh, listed on our website. Yes, we do. Oh, um, Seth Apter is asking, what's the best selling product that you've had over the course of your 23 years? Ooh, that, that's, that is a, that's a tough question. All right. So uh, this is a shout out to Terry Quinn, the scrap packs. <laughs> we make this package of goodies that, um, that we have leftovers from our workshops and it's all amazingly good stuff. And we pack it full of doodads and goo and all kinds of uh, handmade papers and um, uh, jelly prints and tags and all, you know, that's left over. And we, um, we package them and we, we sell it. And it is probably one of our, our best sellers. And again, because it's a product that we, can't, you know, we carry in the store um, all the time. Um, rubber stamps used to be a really big. And we, you know, I, I would think that back in the day um, when people were using a lot of rubber stamps as images, um, they were also a bestseller. Our best selling company back then was Judikins because they had very traditional, very classic images. You know, the thing, the hard part about rubber stamps or when you're buying things is that you want to be able to use something, you know, buy something that you can use again and again in different ways in your art. And I think um, that's why stencils are such um, a good product to use, a good tool to use. Um, and Seth actually has some amazing new stencils that he out with. Um, so, um, yeah, but I would just say, um, our scrap pack that is designed and produced by Terry Quinn and um, our rubber stamps. Yes. And you do use those rubber stamps and it's incredible just the different parts of the stamps that can be used on even the uh, dominoes for the bones or you use them in the paper mosaics. There's just, they go everywhere and they're just part of the layering. And that's what I think, if you're the queen of anything, you are the queen of layering, of finding different ways to use different products, of bringing in that box of the goo gahs and doodads, all those technical words that you have and making them just turn into magic. And, you know, yes, a huge shout out to Seth and to KP for bringing more people here, but I can't thank you enough, Patty, for sharing just everything that you do do for the mixed media community and here at Create Arts Online. 
Well, thanks, Tammy. And thank you, everybody who, who tuned in. I love you all. I miss you. And I look forward to seeing you all soon. Yes. Thank you, everyone, for joining us here. Remember, Patty15, it's in the comments. If you have any other questions, you're welcome to leave them in the comments. This video will now be stored at our YouTube channel for anyone to visit, revisit, share with your friends. And thank you all for being here.